Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is NGS and thank you so much for clicking on the video. Today is a very, very lovely day indeed. Today's the day that will go down rather fondly in my book as the day where I finally saw a film starring video game characters where the people working on it actually gave a damn. You are reading that title right, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to be talking all about the Ratchet and Clank movie. Thanks to a special friend of mine, I was able to attend an early screening of the movie in New York City. The film has been rolling out in European territories for the past couple of weeks, but the official release date over here in the United States isn't until April 29th. So being able to see the film a couple of days early, I felt was really good because there are a lot of people who are on the fence about checking out this film. And for the right reasons. Let's be honest, let's just get this on the table. Hollywood has not been kind to video games at all. You name it, they've butchered it. From Street Fighter, twice, to Resident Evil, five, six, seven times. They still keep coming out with those movies. Why don't you guys spend your money on good films like Dread? Why not? Thumbs up. Comment down below if you want a Dread Netflix series. Carl Bond is open to it. Let's do it. <sighs> Not even counting video games. Look at what they did to stuff like Dragon Ball. So suffice it to say, I think the, the, the mantra we've kind of been rolling as video gamers is, hey, it's better if they don't touch it. Because if they do, there's a 99% chance they're going to screw it up. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is, is a time where I can say that I finally have seen a video game movie where the people working on it treated it with respect. They treated this as a labor of love. Props to Rainmaker, props to Kevin Monroe, and props to Insomniac Games for making this the best video game movie to date. Now, there are a couple of things I need to preface this review with. First and foremost, I'm not going to be going into spoilers because I know there's a lot of people who want to hear about the actual movie and not about certain things that happen in it. However, there are a couple of things in the film that I thought were really awesome, so I'm going to talk about that later on in the video. But for now, let's talk about the film as a whole. Y'all know me. I am a very, very big fan of Ratchet & Clank. I've been playing the games since I was a kid. The new game is out on PlayStation 4, so of course I had to cop it day one. So this was a very big deal to me. I remember doing a video when this was announced three years ago. Three years ago, ladies and gentlemen, when they said they were making a Ratchet & Clank movie, I was excited. I was ecstatic. I was jumping off the wall because this was something I wanted to see. These characters in video games, they're just prime for animated series on TV, movies, what have you. I was just wondering why Sony never commissioned them to do this. But we finally got our first foray in what could be a potential future. And they nailed it. This film is living, breathing, Ratchet and Clank. The stuff that you're seeing in this movie is taken directly from the game. The atmosphere, the humor, the characters, the voice acting, it is all Ratchet and Clank, baby. It can wear that logo proudly. There are a couple of things, though, that I had a problem with. Being such a big fa fan of Ratchet and Clank, I was about to say being such a big fat Ratchet and Clank, which would make no sense, but okay. Uh, being such a big fan of Ratchet and Clank, I had very high expectations going into this. And the movie managed to meet the majority of them. First and foremost, I want to talk about the overall, the, the tone of the movie. Something I was worried about. I was worried that they were going to do something that wasn't Ratchet and Clank. The humor in the film is very Ratchet and Clank. And that is awesome because as any fan of the games know, Ratchet and Clank is known for its incredible humor. In some cases, humor that really shouldn't be in a kid's game, well, not a kid's game, but marketed towards younger kids, and it still is in there. It, it, it's the best kind of humor there is. Things that children aren't going to notice when they're playing it, but all the, all, all the adults in the room are going to be like, Ah, oh, fucks with this! <laughs> Arthur. Y'all know that TV series. And they handed it to a T in this game. It's got the Ratchet & Clank humor. However... However, I will say this, though. I think they were very conservative with that type of humor. The Ratchet & Clank games is known for its great writing, and its dialogue, and its character relations. While this movie has all those things, it's not to the same degree. If you're playing the games, you understand why things are the way they are. 
in this movie, it's kind of like they give it to you, but it's paper thin. That's it. They never really go too deep with it. For example, the character relations in this movie. Of course, Ratchet and Clank are in this film. This is the story of how they meet. So if you're a person who's never seen the games, never played the games before, getting all my words mixed up, if you've never played the games before, this is a perfect jumping on point. While you see them meet and you see them interact, that's all you really get in the film. You don't have the intense character bonding with these two guys. Stuff that has basically built the franchise for the past 15 years this is stuff that has spanned multiple trilogies within the franchise and in this movie i mean yeah they have their interactions when they first meet and it's great but that's all you really get you don't see why these guys are the dynamic duo you don't see why these guys are so beloved and i understand that when you're going from one medium to another there are some things that need to be sacrificed and need to be changed like they can't focus 100 percent on ratchet and clank when they're trying to develop these other characters they only got 90 minutes to work with what they got and since they're introducing all these other characters in the film they got to focus on them so they introduce the galactic rangers commander cork and they also have the villains in the film and the development is spread between all of those characters uh, and in some cases it works and in other cases it doesn't. Where it does work is with the villains of this movie. Uh, the villain of the movie, I believe his name was Dirk. He's portrayed by Paul Giamatti. He had a lot of development in this film. You get to see his nefarious plans and who he's working with. Speaking of nefarious, I kind of just gave it away. Um, you see who he's working with in the movie. And a lot of time is spent with that character, which is cool. Especially considering, you know, they, they have to build these characters up. But what kind of sucks is not a lot of time is spent with the heroes. Everything seems so paper thin, to say the least. Like, it just feels like they're there. It's cool that you see them, but they don't really do much with them. And that's what's kind of disappointing because I love the Ratchet & Clank games because of the relations with the characters and seeing them grow. I understand that this is a film and they're probably going to want to save that stuff for future installments, but... Hey, it is something I have to mention in a movie. Second, the humor of the film. Like I mentioned earlier, they nail the Ratchet and Clank humor, but it's so few and far between. That's not to say that there isn't any humor in the movie. Oh, there is. But it's not the kind of humor I was expecting. It's not toilet humor like you would see in something like Minions or some really crappy show on the Disney Channel. But it's just generic pop culture, to coin a phrase from Zack Snyder flavor of the week sort of thing it's stuff that you would find funny scrolling through a 14 year old's facebook feed like oh are you texting while i'm giving off my evil nefarious plan like sure that may be funny now but that's not something that's gonna hold true five six years down the road right down the road this is something that pixar and dreamworks especially has excelled at looking at their movies and the humor that they're giving off it's very genuine it's very well written in this one, they kind of take the easy way out, and, I mean, it just, it doesn't hit home with me. Just being completely honest, it doesn't. For fans of the franchise, you understand that this series has had phenomenal dialogue. In this movie, it's like, it's serviceable, and that's it. That's what a lot of things this movie feel like. If you are a fan of Ratchet and Clank, you're going to have a better enjoyment of this movie than someone who's not. If you're a person who's just looking for an animated film to check out, or you're a parent who's begrudgingly dragged through the movie theaters by her child, you're going to look at this movie and be like, oh, okay, that was alright. There's nothing that distinguishes this from any of the other generic animated features that are out. I mean, comparing this to something like Inside Out or Zootopia or the fantastic How to Train Your Dragon series, this is just kind of okay okay and that's what i guess i was kind of disappointed in because especially because i'm a big fan of ratchet and clank it's not that what they did was bad it's just that it was bare minimum and nothing else which kind of goes against what i started off the video with saying this is the best video game movie out there it is and there are reasons for this movie to receive praise especially from fans of the franchise but as a fan of this series fanboy at this point from what i've been saying it just kind of feels like you could have done so much more in the humor in the development and that's another thing that you know going back to the whole paper thin thing like they establish that ratchet has this relationship with uh the characters portrayed by john goodman 
but they really never go too deep into it. It has its themes and it has its message and that's all well and good as every animated feature does, but it really doesn't go for the one, two, you know, it just doesn't connect like it should. Like when you're watching something like Zootopia or Inside Out, it just doesn't really hit home like it's supposed to. And I know I'm so excited. I'm probably hopped up on sugar or something. But now I want to move into some of the good things about the film. First off, if you've seen the trailers, if you've played the games, this animation is top notch. This is stuff that we dreamed of seeing 10 plus years ago when we play video games. This is just beautiful. The animation is so smooth. It is solid. You're definitely going to get an enjoyment out of this. Uh, as, as far as the voice acting goes, like I mentioned earlier, fan freaking tastic. It feels like I'm playing a video game. They brought back James Arnold Taylor, David Kay, and I believe Jim Ward, who voices Commander Quark. They're all back and they're better than ever. And I'm so glad, so, so freaking glad they didn't recast them with some generic Hollywood actor. Because that tends to happen when you're doing these sort of movies. You get involved in different unions and contracts. You can't play this, can't play that. It's a whole bunch of legal mumbo jumbo. But I'm glad they brought back these guys because they are these characters. I cannot accept anyone else in the role. Now, everybody else in the film, though, that is where it's kind of bogged down. The Galactic Rangers, I mean, if you to if you didn't tell me that they were portrayed by Bella Thorne and uh, Rosario Dawson, and I forgot who voiced the other character, I wouldn't have known. I, I really wouldn't. They don't have a lot of dialogue in the film, and to be honest, maybe they should have replaced them with actual voice actors in the industry. Part of me believes that they cast these Hollywood actors because they wanted to get the, you know, the A-lister, top billing banner, like, oh, we got Paul Giamatti and John Goodman. But it, it was just nothing. I didn't really see much use in it. I mean, it'd be one thing if they really crushed the role, like, oh my God, I did not expect that. Like Adam Sandler in Hotel Transylvania. I did not expect Adam Sandler could be a good voice actor, but he proved me wrong. Everybody in this movie, outside of John Goodman, who's a given, he's done voice acting before, and Paul Giamatti, everybody else felt forgettable. And that's kind of sad, especially in animated features. I want to grow with these characters and see what they're capable of. Unfortunately, we didn't get that in this film for character development and for voice acting. But ladies and gentlemen, that's basically what I thought of Ratchet and Clank. It's an overall solid film. I know I'm sounding very harsh on it, but that's because I love this series to death. And I think that we should have gotten more than what we got. Is it serviceable? Yes. Do I want to see more from this franchise? Heck yeah. Am I going to see it in the movie theaters and pay my own money? Of course I'm going to. I'm going to see it probably two more times because I want to support this movie. Not because I think it's bad. It isn't bad at all. It's because I like where they're going with this, and I like the effort, and the, the, it's, it's a labor of love, and I can definitely see that. I just think that they were kind of holding back on certain aspects of it. So this is the part in the video where I'm going to go directly into the spoilers, because there are some cool things that I do want to talk about. Particularly the Easter eggs, to say the least. Now, y'all know this. If you have played Ratchet & Clank, if you've played the PlayStation console in general... You could not go into this movie and not expect them to do something, right? First and foremost, there are a couple of Easter eggs, like I mentioned. One, there's a, there's a couple in particular. I want to highlight three. First off, the PlayStation sound effect is in this movie. The OG PlayStation sound effect when you boot up the console, that really loud... When you knew greatness was about to happen, that's in this film and it's done in a very tasteful way. I'm not going to tell you how though. The second scene, this one I do have to kind of give some context to. I know it's kind of going to ruin it, but it's literally a, it's a, it's a fly by night. You're going to forget it if you don't actually look out for it. It's something that is gone in the blink of an eye. There's a particular scene in this movie where Ratchet and Clank are going on a uh, mission, right? And Clank is trying to get to know Ratchet, so he's trying to see what kind of animal Ratchet is. And he's going through his index in his uh, memory, and he scrolls through two animals in particular that come up with an error. An Otzel and a Raccoon. I'm not going to say anything else than that. But they did it. They friggin' did it. 
And the final scene in the movie is actually a post credit scene. And this is something where I, I love how everybody is spoofing Marvel right now and they know it. They wear it with a badge, like with Deadpool. In this film, there's a post credit scene. And you know how in Ratchet and Clank, it usually gives you a status reading of where the location is and the time and what the situation is? They gave you all that, and then it was just like, dot, 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 oh, you knew this was coming. Like, it's just because everybody knows with these movies nowadays, Marvel changed the game. You have to have a post credit scene. And it's something that's really good. It's sequel baits for the future, which is another reason why I'm looking forward to this series. I want to see where they go with this, because they laid such a good foundation that I think they can build upon. I hope this movie succeeds. I really genuinely do. Because while it has its faults, this is something I like to see because these people, they know what they're doing. And I want to support them because they have good ideas. This isn't a case of studio meddling or we have to begrudgingly support it because it has the name Ratchet and Clank. No, this is Ratchet and Clank. It's just a couple of things were kind of uneasy to say the least. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, that was my review, spoiler-filled, spoiler-free, I don't know what I'm going to call it at this point, of Ratchet and Clank. I definitely recommend you guys check it out. It's worth seeing, but like I said, there are a couple of things that, well, needed to be addressed. Anyways, I'm going to go back to playing this right here. Speaking of which, have you picked up the new game? Let me know down below in the comment section. And what is your favorite Ratchet & Clank game? Be it the new one, be it the side series. Heck, you can put all for one if you want. I don't know if you really want to, but hey. The beautiful thing about this world is everyone has opinion, and they're entitled to it. For me, for now, I'm NGS signing out. Like always, I will catch you guys later. Peace.